How many times have I broken this promise? But not anymore, boys and girls. We're back. Cue the intro. Now. Welcome back. I hope you have a lovely holiday break. And before we get into it, Alex explain the dynamics. We're going to have a new show on Wednesdays and Fridays. And for the first, I say, three weeks or so, um, we're going to cover like the very basics of Photoshop, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Uh, because I don't want to go into something like masking if people don't even know how to work in layers. So for the first three weeks, we're going to go to the very basics of Photoshop. So it might be a little bit boring uh, for those who already know it, but it's, it has to be done. And after that, on uh, Wednesday is going to be the main show. It's going to be like the largest show or whatever, the, uh, you know, the main tutorial. And then on Friday, we're going to have a, a, a companion show or something, you know, something lesser. And, and that's how it's going to go. Once we start getting into the wedding season, uh, we might only have one show per week. And we're going to have a break uh, at the summer um, when, it's at its, when I'm going to be busy at my, you know, when I'm going to be most busy doing something else. Um, so we're going to have two seasons per, per year uh, with, a, with a short break, um, you know, during the summer. And that's how we're going to roll. Okay, so I ran into this little problem. And it wasn't until then that I could finally put myself in somebody else's shoes when it comes to Photoshop. So if it wasn't because of these videos, I, I would not have been uh, editing editing video. And what happened is that I opened up Premiere and I, I knew the interface. Uh, I mean, I didn't know the interface. That was my problem. Uh, but I knew the language. So I, I was getting frustrated that I didn't know like my way around the program. But I, I like I wanted to like literally yell at it because I knew like I wanted, you know, some curves or some, you know, some sort of white balance or, or a way to crop or whatever. And I could not do it, even though I like I knew what I wanted. I just didn't know how to get to it into the program. And um, as, as someone who, who might be, uh, who might understand the photography language, but it's not familiar with Photoshop, I can see how some of you guys might have the same kind of frustration um, where you like, you know what you want, but you don't know how to get it from Photoshop. Um, so uh, let's get rid of this face. I'm going to the computer and going to the Photoshop interface. So this is the Photoshop interface. To our left, we have the toolbar. To the right, we have our panels. And to the top, we have the two options. And on the very top, we have the, uh, we have the menu. Easy as that. So let's take a look at the toolbar. Now we're gonna talk about all of these tools individually once it's time to use them. But for now, let's just get a quick overview. So the toolbar is divided in sections. Let's take a look at the first section. These are our selection tools. This is where we can rotate or crop our image or select parts of an image or sample some parts of an image. Then we have our editing tools. These are the tools that are going to affect the pixels directly. And these are destructive adjustments, unless we make them non-destructive once we learn how. Okay, so in here, this is where we're going to retouch skin and painting color and dodge and burn, etc. Then we have our vectors and paths tool. Vectors and paths work different than pixel-based tools, like the ones in the previous section, because these, uh, once you resize them or reshape them, these do not become pixelated. Um, they are essentially a mathematical equation, and that's how they work. So these are good for making lines or, or simple shapes, like type. The, the pen tool in particular, we can also use to make very precise selections. This is a more advanced way of making selections. And we'll talk about it later in the year. Finally, we have all these miscellaneous tools that don't have too much in common. We have our hand tool. And if I zoom into the image by pressing Command plus on a Mac or Control plus on a PC, um, I can click and drag around the image and navigate that way through it. So that's what the hand tool is for. Then we have our zoom tool. It's another way of zooming. We can Alt or Control click on an image to zoom out, or we can just simply click on the image to zoom in. Then we have our foreground and background colors. These are, these are going to be useful mostly for when we're masking, but we can also paint in colors manually with the brush tool. This is what those are used for. 
Then we have uh, a quick mask mode. We're going to talk about it more when we go into masking. And then the screen mode, which is how we view Photoshop. I'm going to talk about it later in this video. Now let's take a look at panels. Panels are Photoshop. They are the Photoshop interface. So let's see how we navigate through those. Well, panels can be arranged, grouped together in tabs, and, and sometimes these are related panels like color and swatches. And then they are in different groups, like here this adjustments and styles panel is in a different group than the color and swatches panel. And then we have a, another group in here like layers, paths, and channels. And these are all related, so Photoshop groups them together. So panels can be expanded on its tab and or hidden, you know, behind another tab. Panels can also be collapsed to its icon. So in here we have the history panel and the properties panels and they are collapsed so that only when you click them, they pop up open. Panels exist because Photoshop has many uses besides photography or retouching. So some users will have, will make better use of some panels than others. And, and these panels, you can also rearrange them. So we can collapse the entire panel and we can only, so we can only see uh, its name and then until we click it, it opens and then we, drag, we double click it again to collapse it. And we can rearrange them. So we can grab this entire group and move it somewhere else. We can probably move this on top or grab it and move it right here. You can pretty much arrange them anywhere to, to your liking and to the way that your workflow works. The way you arrange these panels, it's called the, works, the workspace. And Photoshop comes with several workspaces by default. And we can access those if we click right here on this drop down menu, or if we go to the window menu and we can select workspace and build them from there. So the essentials is the default workspace. Now let's try to take a look, take a look at the photography workspace. This is probably going to work work best and this is where you should probably start. So now that we have the photography workspace, um, we can see different panels that were not even open in the essentials workspace. All of our panels are going to be here in the windows, in the window menu. So we have all here, all the ones that have the check mark are the ones that we can see on the screen and the ones that are not on the check mark, we are not seeing them on the screen. All right. Now let's take a look how I modify the photography workspace. This will work for me, which might not work for you, but it doesn't hurt to try. And, and you will be modifying your workspace as you find out which tools or which panels you use more than others. So it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly as mine, but just keep in mind that you can always change this Photoshop interface to better fit your purposes. Well, I realized that all of this gray space right here is being misused because I don't focus my attention to that part of the screen that much. And I wanted to have enough space on my layers panel so that I can navigate through all my many layers easily. Now my adjustments panel, all of these adjustments, you're later going to find out that these are the same are these, as these adjustments here in the layers panel. And in here they are better explained because they have the name. In here in the adjustments panel, you have to look through them to see which one of those is which, try to figure out the icon. So what I did is I dragged my layers, channels, and paths panels, all this group, and I put them right next to my toolbar. Now, when we make these adjustments, and we're gonna learn about working with layers next week, we have to, we work with the properties panel. And the properties panel is gonna be a lot of times open as I make these adjustments. If I have this panel pop up right here, it's gonna block parts of the image. So what I did is I grabbed the properties panel and I moved it here with the adjustments. So now I have more space for my properties. And because I like to make myself shortcuts, and when we talk about actions, you're gonna see what I mean, I move the actions panel in here on top of the histogram panel. So now I have my actions here and I pull this down to resize it. So now I have my actions in hand and my properties in hand because these are going to be used frequently. The layers, the properties and the action. Now I do keep the history panel, for example, in here because I only use it every once in a while when I want to go back and look at the back and forth 
So this is not open all the time, so I don't need it. So I let it be collapsed. And that's what I think you should do. Whichever panels you know or act or functions that you know you only use every once in a while, you can keep them collapsed because you still use them and just bring them up whenever you, you're gonna use them. And the ones that you know that, are, that you're gonna have on your screen most of the time, make them enough, make enough roof, room for them so that you can quickly access all of those functions. So now you customize your workspace and you wanna save it for posterity. All right, well, let's go to the window menu and we can go here with where it says workspace and we can create a new workspace. I already created one, so I'm not gonna save it. But anyways, in here you can name it and then save that workspace. Let's say that you messed something up and you don't know how to get it back in your workspace. Well, it's easy as going window, workspace, and whatever workspace you had selected, you can reset it to its default. So now I'm back at my default photography workspace, and I can easily go back to my retouching workspace that I had already saved. Now let's take a look at how you can rearrange the images that you have open. Sometimes you might have two or more images open at the same time, whether because you're copying adjustments from one image to another or because you want to copy a facial expression or some part of one image pasted into another one. All right, so let's go to the window menu and here we can go to the arrange and here we have all these options. These are pretty much self-explanatory and you can tile these images side by side in different ways. I do not believe this is very effective for photography, but if one day you accidentally rearrange them, you have to know how to get it back. So let's go to the window, arrange, and then we can consolidate all two tabs. Now let's take a look at how it used to be before. Let's go to window, arrange, float all in windows. And these are um, the images as, uh, as independent windows open side by side. And you can see this is a little bit messy and I, I just I do not like it. It is there and you might accidentally access it. So again, this is why I'm showing you this so you can get it back to how it was. And we can collapse this together, like this. And now we have tiled them into how they were, but they're still on a window. And then we can tile them back together or we can go to window, range, let's flow them all again. And then we go window, range, consolidate all the tabs. Tabs were introduced in Photoshop CS4, and I think it was one of the best advancements that Photoshop has. And I think this is the best way of working with different images. Now let's take a look at Photoshop's viewing mode, which we can access in here as the last option in the tools panel, or with probably the easiest shortcut ever. So let's do the shortcut way. Okay, we can press F to go to what is called the full screen mode, and it's still like it maximizes Photoshop window to your screen. If you can see, let's go back. You can see we're gonna get rid of this title bar and it also gets rid of all of the other images. Well, it hides them. So if you're working with several images, this might not be the best option for you, but it's the best when you wanna maximize your working space. Then we have the complete full screen mode where you can only see the image and you lose everything else. You can still work in this mode if you press tab, it will bring back all the panels and this is the um, way to get even more viewing space. And if you can see it changed the color here of the background on the canvas, you can right click it and then get it back to the dark gray if you want to. And to get out of this full screen mode, just press F again. So you can just press F several times until you get to that point where you want to. Another advantage of working on the full screen mode is that it allows us to navigate through the canvas a little bit more easy. Right now, I am not at the full screen mode. And if I want to use my hand tool by going in here to the tools menu or by pressing the space bar, uh, I cannot drag the image around. But if I am on full screen mode, if I press F just once, now I can move freely the image on my canvas. All right, so if you consider 16 minutes to be short, then I guess that was a short overview of the Photoshop interface. Um, so I hope that with this, you can at least start to get around the program. 
Um, I know a lot of the things we talk about still don't make a lot of sense. But remember, this is a piece of a puzzle that we kind of like put in together. And it's going to make sense eventually. So that's it for today. And I'll see you on Friday.